Testing, testing. Alright, looks like we're live. Uh, there's going to be some background noise for a minute. While my landscapers finish up outside, I'm probably not going to do anything until... Uh, until they get done. be on voice chat for the first uh, probably 10 minutes because these landscapers are being really noisy outside so I will be setting up my flight but we won't be starting until around 1530 Zulu so you've got a few minutes. Uh, I am going to be parked on the ramp at uh, GA spot 3-1.
I'm going to be on mute for a couple minutes because landscapers are being noisy outside. Yeah. Morning, by the way. Morning, how are you? Oh, <laughs> I've been up since about 5, so. 5 a.m. your time. Yeah. Um, it, it wasn't, no, normally for me it's about 6, 6.30, but today I uh, was not sleeping well. Yeah, it happens. This is also pretty early for me. What's our cruise altitude? 3,000? 3,000. I'm trying to get used to programming the uh, flight plan in the uh, plane. So. A little bit, I guess. Kilo. Echo. Alright, the game's loading up. Uh, I'm gonna take that moment to get some coffee stirred. Sounds good. <coughs> William. Delta? No, Bravo. There we go. All right, flight plan is programmed. So now if we zoom back out, and we look over here on our MFD, you can see that we're going to fly a north route up into Cape Cod Bay. We will turn left to head toward New Bedford and we'll fly right over Salem and I may drop us down in altitude when we do that. We'll see how things go. I will be using in-game ATC for the airports but I will be doing an uncontrolled flight so we won't be interacting with ATC while we're flying. Looks like wind is currently 8 knots out of the northeast. So we'll probably be taking off runway 6, so I'm going to set myself up for that now. And I'm going to preset my altitude to 3000. And we'll climb at 500. That's a pretty comfortable climb in this plane. And let's do our next checklist. Let's do our taxi checklist. Taxi light. Not needed, it's daylight. Landing light. Not needed, it's daylight. Strobes on. Nav on. We're going to keep the parking brake engaged for the moment. Brakes test. Test and checked. Rudder test. Test and checked. And we've still got about 20 minutes before departure, so we're just going to sit tight here, let others join. So we're just looking at ground. What's ATIS got to say? Yeah. Well, we're up to a 14 knot wind.
Listen to that. So looking at my charts, runway six. So we're going to taxi out to that taxiway ahead of us. We're going to turn left on taxiway Bravo. Follow that down to taxiway Alpha, <laughs> and then we'll hit up for takeoff. Uh, what server you're on? Your West Coast? Yep. And I'm in parking spot three one. Okay. Oh, there you are. I don't see you. Where are you? I'm still on the map. Oh, okay. On my airplane. Be Cessna buddies today. Sounds good. Got my espresso. Got my corn checks. Got there my you. airplane. I'm happy man. Got everything you need. I got my water, I already had my breakfast, and I have a few snacks here if I need them. Uh, that's not right. That plane's just too big to be landing here. Mm -hmm. Welcome welcome to AI planes. I just watched a generic jumbo jet land at Hyannis. And that's definitely no bueno. Uh, they might put like small uh, private jets and corporate jets in and out of here, but not that sucker. That AI traffic? Yeah. Yeah. The runway's big enough to handle it, but that they don't they don't run them out of there. Uh, that reminds me I'm gonna turn on tags so I can actually see people. Uh, I always forget where that's hidden. It's under general, not assistance, right? Traffic. Traffic nameplates on. Looks like the landscapers are done in the backyard, so I won't have any more annoying noises. <coughs> uh, they are landing and departing. I don't know if you heard me, if you still had your headset on when I was setting up. They are landing and departing on runway 6, so we'll pull out of the parking area, turn left, and pretty much it's a straight taxi down to... Uh... Oh, there you are. Okay. You just appeared. Let's start up real quick. Won't take long in this plane. Nope. You don't have a tail number. No, it doesn't support it. Interesting. You can't see other people's tail numbers. That's kind of weird. Nope. Oh, that's that's crazy. I just heard your plane starting up in my headset. Yep. Did it seem too close or something? No, it was perfect. Oh, okay. Let's see. Works on. It's just cool to have that effect, you know? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> What's our destination? Our destination is Kilo What's Echo that? William Bravo. Uh, we're going via the G. G uh, Gales, Golf Alpha India Lima Sierra Waypoint. That'll bring us up north over um, Plymouth. Okay, well, you mentioned more letters while I'm trying to dial in. Sorry. The airport. <laughs> Kilo Echo William Bravo. Echo Limo Bravo, okay. Echo William Bravo. Echo William Bravo. Yeah. 
should come up New Bedford. Did you just say there's a departure? Uh, yeah, we're going to go via the Gulf Alpha India Lima Sierra waypoint. And we're going to, I'm going to fly at 1500 feet today for a cruise altitude. So I need to modify my flight plan. doing your run up yeah I figure I'll do it now get it out of the way I know I'm supposed to taxi first but it's gonna be a really short taxi according to the chart so that's where I like my Navigraph charts because now I don't use taxi assistance anymore I just look at the chart on Navigraph We'll turn left onto Bravo, and that turns that turns right into Alpha after we cross runway 33. All right, I'm ready for taxi when you are. All right. Good to go. Parking brake released. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let me release the parking brake. So the yoke has improved my experience in some ways and made little things a lot more difficult than others because I'm so used to having a stick. Right. It's definitely... It's something uh, you have to get used to. It is, yeah, yeah. I am not as graceful as I was. <laughs> uh, I'm going to climb at a rate of 500 up to 1500 after we take off, just so you know. Sounds good. Like my ground maneuvering is not as good. I got to get pedals. I'm using a. Uh, I'm using. I actually re redid the uh, the rudder trim to do it for. For now, because I don't need that as much. All right. You ready to run out onto the runway? Yep. I'm running a headset now, and it makes such a difference in the sound experience. Oh yeah, like I, I like, agree. I like before, I couldn't have heard your engines. Now I hear them. Oh yeah. All right, I'll uh, I'll take the left side. Okay. 
and I'm going to stop right up on the six here. All right, increasing throttle. Not that it really needs it. Flaps, oh, I'm not doing any flaps, not for this runway. There's plenty of, uh, plenty of room to roll out on this one. 40 knots. Sixty knots, rotate. Locking my heading at six zero. My stupid monitor. I'm I'm running a separate monitor for Twitch, and it keeps going to sleep. Twitch for some reason doesn't keep it awake. Fields off to the left there. I'm not going to start our bank till we get about probably till we get up to 1500. Get ourselves up over over the cape here. I somehow screwed up my flight plan. I didn't put in the um, departing airport. So oh, so when you lock it in, it's going to go right to Gales? Too. That's fine. Yeah, once Gales gets on my map, we'll see if it's, my flight plan starts there. Yeah, Gales is uh, pretty much due north of us, so. Oh, you're ahead and uh, below me. Okay. I climb by um, in, uh, airspeed. Okay, I, yeah. I'll come up to, uh, I'll increase my climb a little bit. Uh, I just passed through 1,000. I just, I literally just hit 1,000 as you said that. I, you look so far. Oh, I think, you know. Yeah, altimeter was way off. Oh, you were, yeah. I'm at, I'm at 1,800. <laughs> <laughs> well, our cruise is 1,500, so you might want to come down a little. That'll definitely let me catch up to you. Yep. Yeah. 1,350. And I'm going to start my bank to the north. Banking left. You know, nice yoke and um, rudder pedals are, are good and all, but you know what I really want? is a goddamn trim wheel. So that's, that's on my list. Um, I do like the button trim, though, but yeah, a trim wheel would be nice. The problem, the only problem with the button is that uh, you know how on a keyboard where you press the key yeah. and it gives you one letter. It, it, it's not as you precise. Hold it down. Yeah. Well, so how the keyboard works and how the operating system works is that you you hold down a key and it gives you one letter. Right. And then after after a short delay, it gives you a whole bunch of more of those. That really letter. fast. Yeah. That's exactly how the trim wheel button, button. works. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you if you press it once, you get one tiny thing and then it hesitates and then it starts rolling see and with my, with my hodas i had it on the um on the throttle there's the what most people probably use for left and right rudder i had that set to yeah. my trim and that worked see, really well that was smooth and that's uh analog it was analog yeah hmm. so i need something like that And then I had, I twisted the stick for rudder when I had that. Because I used, the way I felt I used the uh, trim more than the rudder, so I wanted the better control on the trim. Right. Uh, I can go bring speed back now. I just realized I was to the firewall on it. 
Yep, that'll let me catch up. I'm going to try to come back to around 115 knots. Or thereabouts. I must not be used to um, flying at sea level. The plane is just different. It's got all this hair to suck up. Yeah. Well, if you're not used to the, if you don't fly the 172 a lot either, that it flies a lot different than other planes. Oh, I do. Oh, okay. But I'll be flying at like 4,000, 6,000, yeah. 7,000 feet. Yeah. You know, ground level. Right, right. I'm usually picking like mountains or deserts or something. It's a very challenging plane to fly at those altitudes too, because it doesn't grab the air very well. Oh yeah, which is kind of nice. It's yeah. Just, an extra challenge. It is a fun challenge. I've been doing flights around Arizona and New Mexico, so I've been experiencing some of that. Let's see here. I'm going to get my autopilot set up a little bit. 1500. Hold that. So you're still a little over me, it looks like, which is funny because yeah. it shows you at 1500 feet and I'm at 1500 feet. No, I'm actually at 1,600. Oh, okay. All right, I've picked up my, um, I'm headed straight for Gales now. So off to the left, that is Sandwich and the north coast of Cape Cod. What's your heading? Uh, current heading is 345, but we're slowly coming to, to like 350. <clears throat> if you look to the left, you can see what looks like a river over there. That's actually the canal that separates Cape Cod from mainland Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. And it's man-made, so the Cape is not considered an island, but technically that made it an island. And straight ahead at like your one or two o'clock, you should be able to see an airport flashing over there, a runway flashing approach. That's Providence Town, that's the tip of the Cape. And from this altitude, you can almost see that from Boston when you take off because it hooks around so much. Sorry, I'm giving a little bit of a tour as we fly here. <laughs> for those who aren't familiar with the area. Oh yeah, there's Gales where I uh, where my route starts. Okay. Because I screwed it up. So you should be you should be good once we get to that. That's fine. I'm gonna get to that and I'll be banking to I don't know what the exact heading is. I'm gonna say it's around two five oh probably from there to EWB. And I'm holding right at about 115 knots right now, so. Mm -hmm. Pretty steady. Yeah, I'm up. I'm off your left tail. Okay. Well, I'll be cutting right in front of you then when we bank. Well, that's not good. <laughs> So if you see, if you look where that, where the canal is on the left, to the north of that, uh, a little bit north of that, you can see a white beach area. That is Plymouth, and that's where we'll be banking and heading over. I know this area I like the back of my hand, so. And if you ever get to go there, you really need to see Plymouth Rock. It's the most impressive thing in the world. And I mean that with my normal level of sarcasm. Oh. I, I, have, I have to laugh because my wife, the first time we, you know, when she moved to the East Coast when I was living there, and because uh, she's from Western Canada, 
And uh, I'm like, oh, I got to take you to Plymouth Rock. You got to see this. We get there and she sees it and she goes, this? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a total like mock-up thing. It's hilarious. I mean, it's real. You got you to gotta see it. It's su- super impressive. All right, I'm starting my bank. Uh, 260 looks like we're coming around to which yours should match if you're if you're using autopilot now so well I'm hand flying up to, uh, to get a little closer okay oh yeah I just did an outside view with you behind me that looks really cool yeah I've, I've got you right on my nose and I'm just matching your bank yeah formation is awesome well there probably shouldn't be any weight turbulence that's your problem not mine <laughs> exactly. Apparently, that person ahead of us thinks they're funny. Tee hee tee hee. Come on, stupid screen, stop going to sleep. I just want to make sure the stream's okay. Plus, if somebody chats in there, I want to see it. Your uh, your other screen's got narcolepsy. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm running a Twitch app on Android TV, and I think that I think Android TV just doesn't see it as active. It means that whatever whatever Twitch does for video doesn't trigger the the uh, the activity. He thinks it's a static image. Well, it's actually a Google TV, not Android TV. They changed the name. Turn it. Let's see if I can pick out where the plantation is. Plymouth Plantation. Uh, I gotta get closer. It's gonna be, should be around our 11 o'clock when we go over the coast. You gotta get a better look at the coast to see exactly where we're crossing, though. <clears throat> oh, we're south of Plymouth. Crap! I calculated it wrong. Never mind everything I said about Plymouth. <laughs> we're coming up in over Bourne. I didn't plot as far enough Wait. north. I want to go see this famous Plymouth Rock. That's yeah, too bad. So impressive. All right, fine. We're going to break course. Killing the autopilot, banking to the right. Oh, you ain't kidding. What? Banking? Yeah, I pulled it uh, a little uh, hard at first. No, I mean, you're not kidding about breaking course. Oh, no. You want to see Plymouth. So we're going to go see Plymouth. Up. Whoa, 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 not that much up. Still getting used to this, uh, this control system here. And I'm going to unlock now, put autopilot back on so we can maintain level flight. We'll be coming down, back down to 1500 after we bounce around a little. <coughs> and we'll do it this way. We'll do it the, uh, we'll fly by heading. So I'm going to take heading uh, 345, 350 up the coast. So that big harbor you see ahead of me, big harbor you see ahead of me is Plymouth Harbor. Okay. So those tall buildings you see are not really tall buildings, just so you know. There's nothing that tall. Yeah, I was flying Plymouth. around... Uh my area and this what is usually no more than a three-story building had like dozens and dozens of like 10-story buildings yeah <laughs> weird yeah there's some there's definitely some issues there i find that in rural and semi-rural areas it does really really well when it gets to like suburbia it starts having a little trouble
I flew over my hometown this morning where I grew up and uh, noticed a few of the buildings there. Like again, it's a town that has maybe a couple of four or five story buildings at most. And there's 10 and 12 story buildings in the middle of town. So we'll, you see the, um, I forget what the proper term is for it, but you see the uh, sandbar kind of ahead of us? Yep. What is that called? Just left. Crap. Yeah. So we'll fly out toward the end of that and then we'll uh, come back, we'll come back to the left. But meanwhile, uh, if you can see that two lane highway on our left there, that is US 3 and where it's kind of splits and gets wide there near to the to the right of that um, windmill the town kind of. yep you see where the windmill is and then the highway spreads wide just to the right of that is where Plymouth Plantation would be and that's like I Plymouth Plantation is a mock-up village that they did to and people like actors like go in in costume and pretend they're living in that environment for the tourists so oh, yes. there's not going to be enough building there for us to really see it, but um, I don't think. But that's that's basically what that is. And then one of my favorite Japanese hibachi restaurants is over there, over up there on the left too. So we're going over the golf course now. I am actually not going to do what I said. I'm going to bring us now to uh, 330. Okay. And bring us in over town. And, uh, yeah, coming right over the harbor. I want to see as we get closer if I can see where the memorial stuff, where the rock is, and the Mayflower too. And I'm trying to see if I can see Plymouth Plantation to point it out to you, but it looks like looks like the way they do the tree cover might be a problem. Might oh that is yeah that's no I can't spot it all right so to the left um, you're gonna see what looks like some docks like like a little marina right before you get to that marina there's a long dock sticking out. That long dock sticking out has the Mayflower 2 parked there. And you, obviously it's not represented very well but that's where it is. And then... There's a sequel? Uh, basically it's a, it's a two-thirds size replica of the original Mayflower. And then Plymouth Rock if you look there's a bunch of little buildings kind of to the left of that. Plymouth Rock is kind of in there, I guess would be the easiest way to describe it. But yeah, that's that's it. Plymouth Rock is right there. There's the buildings. There's the Mayflower 2. And then you've got the main dock. There's a nice restaurant right there. All right, let's get our heading back. Um, I'm actually just going to resume nav, so that's going to pull me over kind of hard to the uh, to the left. Our eventual course would be 260 once we get back, back um, to that line. Uh, no, you know what? Let's not. Let's not. Let's uh, let me correct that. Let's come in at 240. Heading 240. Uh, are you on my left? Uh, no, I'm in your right. Zero. Oh, you're below me. Okay, below and to the right. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, lost a hundred in that turn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna contact that airport and see what they're landing and taking off. Uh, EWB, New Bedford Regional, Adis. Three two six at eight. So three two six at eight. Let's look see what we got for runways. Oh, they have a tower. Well, we're going to request New landing. Bedford, tower Cessna November one six four one three is two zero miles northeast with November to land. Cessna November one six four one three New Bedford. Left traffic runway five. Left traffic runway five. So left traffic means we want to overshoot it and pull around, right? Because we want to. Uh, what's the runway? Left traffic runway five. Runway five. So that's pointing. Um, so we're going to circle around the airport. Yeah. Enter left traffic runway five seven. Well, it would be um, about five hundred above pattern, and then enter the inside uh, downwind, right? Right. Uh, that that airport to our left, by the way, that we're about to pass. That is Plymouth Municipal, and that is the pl one place that I've actually ever been in a small plane. I, uh, I took, in the 2008, I took a single flight lesson in a Cessna 152 there. And it was a day that was expecting thunderstorms, and the air was not kind to me. Um, and I decided that was going to be my only flight lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so runway uh. five. Uh... Looks like the approach is 1,500 feet. Airport is at... ...65 feet for the airport to land. They do have an ILS active. Uh, or an RNAV. I might cheat and do the RNAV. Are you going to practice an instrument approach? I like doing RNAVs. Um, they, you don't they, do an RNAV. The GPS does it for you. Well, yeah. Remember what I said the other day about work smarter, not harder? <laughs> I think that's the airport uh, at our, like, 11 o'clock. Way out there, if you look. How far are we out? 15 miles? Yeah. Well, according to the GPS. Uh, 15 point, yeah, I'm at 15.2 right now. I suppose that's still accurate, even if you're way off course. Yeah, that's still distance to target. All right, fine, I'll do it. I'll do it your way. This ain't my live stream. Just, just tell my cut, just tell my uh, passenger here that he might get a little bumpy ride. I'm going to go to 255 to get us a, give, give me a little bit of width to move around. Because we want to cut... Yeah. To get runway five, we want to we want the runway to pass us on the left, and then bank in. I think we want to pass over um, pass over the numbers. Oh really? Okay. Then forget that. Come back to. Because if you're going to cross, if you're going to cross an airport, yeah, the place that you want to do it is the place where the um, the traffic is lowest, and that's okay. Um, over the numbers of the active runway. Well, I learned something today because I don't, I don't do it right. <laughs> I don't know how, um, I don't know how official that is, but basically, um, I don't know. It's one of those things that isn't. It's not really something ATC will tell you because they're, they're just going to tell you. The tower will just tell you, okay, you know, enter downwind for left traffic or something like that. Right. Um, but really, it's like how do you how do you make sure you're vectoring yourself in a place that doesn't put you, you know, in the path of uh, approaching uh, or departing, taking off or landing. So we want to cross the runway. We don't want to fly. We don't want to fly parallel and, to it. We want to we want to be perpendicular to it. And yes, and this and the safe place to do that is uh, I think it's generally accepted to be 500 feet above traffic. Okay. Above pattern altitude. 
and pattern altitude would be what the approach altitude is, right? Uh, it's uh, unless it's published, it's one thousand feet above ground level. Okay. Well, this airport's at five feet above, or what did I say, sixty-five feet above ground level. Mm -hmm. So, so we want to come in at fifteen hundred, and we're right there, so we're good. Exactly, or sixteen hundred okay. if you want to round up. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. So let's let's come up a hundred feet then. Let's let's do it right by the book. So I'm gonna just bring myself up a hundred feet here. And you are now off to my left, correct? Is that is that you I see I, over there? Okay. Yeah. I can actually see you now, so like through the window. I'll have to break immersion to find you. That's the one thing I don't like about these Cessnas is that my head is above the windowsill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a friend of mine who is a, um, well, I, I haven't talked to him in years, but I just had a friend of mine who taught, uh, he, was, he was an instructor for uh, CRJ type jets. And yeah. uh, he adamantly, adamantly hated Cessnas and planes with the wings over him for that reason. He says the visibility is just awful. And I'm like, well, it depends on if we want to look up at traffic, which I understand from a safety standpoint, yes, it is better to have the wings below you. But when you're sightseeing, you want those wings above you so you can see the ground. And Definitely. when I'm recreationally flying, I'm generally looking at the ground and what's around, you know, what's around for, for sightseeing, so. All right. Interestingly, they've got, it looks like runway two, three lit, even though we're going to be coming in on runway five. So I'm actually going to go back to 240. So then we can cut south over over the runway. Does that make sense? Uh, you got you got sights on the uh, runway, so I'll follow you. Okay. So you can see New Bedford there. That's the city just to the south of the airport. And between that and us are a couple of smaller towns, in Middleborough and Taunton. Nothing really notable about those for most people. Uh, I think I've even never heard of those towns. No, they're pretty small towns. Taunton's only notable thing is if you're a D&D &D fan is they that's where Wormwood Games is based. They make a bunch of fancy boxes and accessories, handmade wood and stuff, really really nice. Super duper premium stuff. To our right, cheat. Look at my map. Uh, to our right, it should be at about our two o'clock. Yeah, you can't really see it very well. It's Fall River. That's where the actual. That's where our passenger wants to go today. But there's no there's no closer. Uh, no closer field to drop a map. That's Fall River where Lizzie Borden took an axe. All right, I'm going to start turning to. Uh, I'm going to go a little further, uh, and then I'm going to turn two one zero to cross the runway. Right about yep. now. Uh, 195 wasn't quite 210 wasn't quite enough. Fifteen years ago, uh, the company I work for, I was working with them then. I left them for a while, but it just came back. 
we did a house down on that uh, that kind of cape or point you can see to the left there and we do high-end smart home smart AV home and that house was done for one of the uh, one of the guys on this old house one of, it was a home that he had yeah. and uh, and then Tiverton Rhode Island which is ahead of us we've done another one for one of the guys there uh, I'm coming down to 180 to cross the runway Six five. Actually, we'll go right to one Wait. five zero. What's that? You said five for left-hand traffic. Yeah. Yeah, five is over here. That's what I said. That's why I was going to bank it around, bank around, and not go over the airport. Yeah, but I'm entering a left-hand traffic for five right now. I'm on the downwind by by heading two five zero. Yeah, I knew I did this wrong. Or, All right. What's me... uh? 230 is the downwind. So we came in on the on the uh, on the downwind side. Of yeah. Runway five. Yeah, I knew I did it wrong. I just got my landing clearance from the tower because you know I'm pointing the wrong way, so I must be ready to land. <laughs> All right, we are going to, for one of the first times, try a landing without, with the oak. So, probably going to get a little rough here. You can go ahead in since you're ready to land. I'll come in behind you. Oh, yeah. I'm turning base right now. Got a long extended base because I needed to bleed off some speed and altitude. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. That would be the 4 and 195 interchange there, or not 424 and 195. Apologies to my passenger. This is probably not going to be very good. No refunds. I meant to do a test run of this uh, the other night, but I didn't get around to it. Well, this is your test run. Yeah. Okay. Looks like you're about to touch down. about 30 seconds behind you maybe, if that. All right, I'm down. 500, 500 feet. Come on, trim, there we go, too much, too much, too much. Yeah, I've started making a shopping list of accessories, and uh, one of the it's like a it's like a switch stack or radio stack or something that has a uh, a trim wheel on it that I'm gonna oh, yeah. add. Pedals is next though because this sucks trying to uh, trying to do rudder with a push button. Yeah, all right, I'm clear of the runway. Okay, I'm about to touch down. Taxiway D. Yeah, I'm probably gonna come in a little too warm for taxiway D. Well, there isn't much past it, is there? Ooh, that was no. tough. Yeah. 
You do. Yeah, I'll be good for D. Yeah. Got to get that D. Four, one, three, exit, runway, when able. So you can make this one. No, that's not a taxiway. That's the cross runway. I do that. I do that sometimes by mistake. I wasn't using any flaps, so I don't need to worry about those. Turning right on to taxiway. Cessna 413 contact ground on 121 decimal niner. Going to 121 decimal niner, Cessna 413. All right, that wasn't too terrible for my first uh, real attempt at a yoke landing. I don't think I broke yeah, the spine of my passenger, so. Well, I'll try again next time. <laughs> That's right. So I'm, uh, I'll pull up near that building over by where you are and uh, unload my passenger and his baggage and then set up for the next one. I'm not even going to exit back to menu. Which is also something I rarely do. I usually exit back to menu between flights. Parking brake on. Oh, on my screen, there's a plane park there. Oh, well, there is now. <laughs> well, now there's two. <laughs> All right. Let's go up to payload. And Get rid of this passenger and his baggage. Let's take on our first passenger. She's 155 pounds, so we're going to put her in the right seat. The other one's 65 pounds, we'll put her in the rear left. And their bags are heavy. Their bags are 120, that's going to put us over. So we're going to take out some fuel. Oh, it's going to be a lot lower than I like it to be. We're at 50% fuel. I do not like flying that short, but I mean, I don't have very far to go. It's not a big deal, but it just bothers me. Can we get 55 out of it? Nope. All right. All right. Let's clear my flight plan. G1000 is doing that thing where it won't let me push the FMS button. Oh, really? So, yep. so what I do when that happens... <coughs> I don't know what it just did. I think I just fucked it up. I think I just had the same thing happen. Uh, so if I hit enter and then flight plan, it finally gave it to me. Oh yeah, okay. So we're gonna enter on that one, we're gonna change it. No, I wanna clear the flight plan. Okay, let's start from scratch. So we're starting at Kilo Echo William Bravo. Kilo Echo. Did you start your engine? I did. Okay. I heard it in my ear. All right, and then we're going to go to... Oh, yeah. 
I want my battery to go dead. That's actually a good idea. All right, so then we're going to YB. This part of the plan I vetted pretty well, I think. And keeping us away from Boston airspace. Mainly because... Yes, please. Well, the traffic, but also mainly because the rendering on the buildings in Boston kind of triggers me. <laughs> it's like really bad. Are you saying it's it, it lacks realism? I'm saying that the buildings, if they looked like that, people would be jumping out of them be, just because. <laughs> and I know I had us at 3,000. Let's do this at 2,000. Okay. Because I think that's uh, I think that's a more fun altitude to fly at. And from there, we're going to Sasio. This makes me long for the uh, daughter where I can uh, just punch it in. Oh, there we go. Okay. It did freeze for a moment, but it's back. All right. S you said not a ramp. What would make your game freeze? Who knows? Ever, ever, since the, ever since the update yesterday, I've had a few issues like with weather updates and stuff. Pause it. The game pauses for a few seconds for some reason. And I haven't had time to screw around with it and figure it out. So it might have been a weather update. All right, I got so my flight plan yeah. dialed in. Yeah, I'm still still working on it. I get my ATIS. Two six study five. Okay, BVY. You got your ears for this airport? Yeah, I use the, um, the ATC window to look at the frequency. Oh, okay. But it, I'm having this problem where the audio doesn't come through. I'm not getting uh, ATIS audio. That's weird. I'm only getting the ticker along the bottom of the ATC window. Apparently, they're now landing and departing runway 32. We have November. Not yet. Yeah. We have two more days to go. I'm listening to AS now. Mine says runway 5 is in use. Landing and departing runway five. Which based on the wind makes sense. Since the wind uh, is uh, We're a K yeah, Kilo Echo William Whiskey Bravo. Bravo. Yeah or Whiskey Bravo, yeah. One two six dot eight five. New Bedford Airport information. Yep. New Bedford ground Cessna November uh, one six. I'm not getting the ticket taxi anymore. to party. What's that? I'm not getting the ticker. I'm not, I don't have any audio and I don't have any. That's great. Text either. For like, I don't know what it was telling me. It said runway three, because I caught the last half of it. It was a runway three two and it was information November. So who knows what it was telling me? Right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think I'm ready to roll. I'm going to set my B button for uh, 
altimeter. 3049. Uh, let me see. Yep. Okay. All right. You take the lead. Yeah. I guess I'm going uh, behind us, looping around. Yeah, let me just load uh, load my flight into um, Navigraph so I have it for reference. Okay, actually, I'll I'll start taxiing. Kilo Echo Libro. I got a whole position for you from because I have the stupid tower on. <laughs> What's that? I just got a whole position for uh, for you because it said you're, you you oh, were in my me? way. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's the other thing I don't like about ETS. They'll be like, uh, you know, pause for traffic. Okay, you can go. Pause for traffic. Okay, you can go. Pause for traffic. Okay, you can go. Yeah, yeah. I just I ignore most of that. Half the time when it says I need to go do a go around too, I look and I'm like, I do not land. <laughs> right. Why would the tower tell you you need to go around anyways? You'd have to be like, I know I know that things are harder to do, you know, in the sim. Yeah. Like like perfect, you know, lining up with the runway and stuff. No, it usually does it if there's somebody else still on the runway. Ah, got it. Like an AI plane that hasn't cleared the runway yet. Or they, or they literally are just clearing their own runway and haven't got the handoff yet. And that's the part that annoys me. Right. I'll be like, the guy's off the runway. I'm fucking landing. <laughs> or right. he's in the jumbo jet at the far end of a, a fourteen thousand foot runway, and I'm, I'm in my Cessna. I think I can handle it. You know. Yeah. In real life. You know. Know. Yeah, I know. I know. All right, we got clearance. Yeah, we're good. It, it's kind of the thing where, like, if you're playing Grand Theft Auto, you know, are you going to stop for all the red lights? No. Right. If you want to just roll right to take off, go ahead. Um, I'll be right behind you. Uh, here we go, then. Throttling up. Holy shit, what the hell is your problem? What's happening? It's nothing, I, I screwed up my takeoff. Don't mind me. Really, this isn't my first time. Well, you're in the air. Yeah, barely. Blame it on the yoke. I am, actually. I gotta get some airspeed. Six hundred. I'm gonna start my left. Six hundred feet. Starting my turn. Going to 2,000? Yeah. I mean, we can go lower if you want. I, I just think scenery-wise, it seems like 2,000 is optimal. Yeah, I agree. Because if you think you want to get low to the ground to see stuff, but then that drastically reduces how far you can see. Yep. 
Yeah. The, the angle of sight seems best between like two and four thousand feet. All right, I'm going to cut back a little on my throttles here now. Well, I'm still climbing at only 70, so I better keep them up. 1,200 feet. Yeah, I am struggling to climb for some reason. I'm going to reduce my climb rate a little bit. It's all those uh, all that people and luggage. It probably is, actually. These little planes you feel that. Yeah, because I didn't put any of that. I'm probably just a single pilot. Yeah, so you're, well, if you left at default, you've got 170 for you and 170 for the co pilot. But you're still 200 pounds lighter than me at that point, maybe 250. Yeah, I'm closer to 250. Yeah, 2,000. Okay, I'm still climbing slowly. And trim it out instead of my autopilot. Oh, <laughs> I had my altitude set wrong. I said set it to 2,000, I still had it at 1,600. I see up there, so we're good. All right, let's see what I can see here and describe to people. Uh, highway off to the right should be US 24. Yeah, that's uh, not US. Is it US or Mass? Oh, that's 140. Yeah, Massachusetts State one, uh, Route 140. Bringing the throttle back. Right, I got nav mode set. Okay. I'm set on nav set mode. On nav mode. You are leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. Oh, goddamn CDI is always on green. Yeah, it defaults to that. Yep. It's annoying. I'm only doing 107 knots. I'm going to play a little more throttle here, get myself up to about 110, 115. Oh yeah, this weight's definitely making a difference. She is sluggish. Sluggish on the climb. I'm overtaking you. Yep, I'm uh, falling back. New Bedford Tower, Cessna, November 16413, frequency change. All right, we are at 115 knots, 2,000 feet altitude, altimeter 30, decimal 50. Most of what you see to the left, I believe, is Rhode Island at this point. Yeah. We're going to come back up over Taunton. And rain him. And this flight will take us west of Boston, literally right dead between the two beltways. Uh, we'll go over Concord, where the battle was, Battle of Con uh, Lexington Concord. Actually, it was in Lexington, but Concord takes the credit for it. Fly over Mansfield, where I used to live. And then over to Beverly, which is where my company's, the company I work for is based. It's weird, the tag below your name says you're at 1906 feet. I'm showing 2000 on the money right on mine. Right. And the, al the altimeter is correct, 3050. Yep. I show you at 1899. So. Yeah. You know what it is? I bet it's AGL. No, because. Uh, no, right. If I'm if I'm up in the mountains, that's going to say you know you're 8,000 feet. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're I was just thinking that because when I'm in yeah when I'm in the uh, Dallas area, it'll say I'm at 500 feet. Right. Even though I'm on the ground. It must be something. Maybe, uh, maybe, 
me do this. If I set altimeter to where it says 1900, that's 3042, which still doesn't make sense. No. I was I was starting to think maybe it's altimeter standard two nine or nine or two would put you there. That's what I was thinking, but that's way off. I see you zipping down under me now. Yeah, because I turned my autopilot off, and now I actually am at nineteen hundred. Or are we gonna cut? Uh, we might go past Gillette Stadium if you're a sports guy. Uh, I am not. I am not either, so never mind. We will be going directly over. Well, we'll po I'll point it out anyway for those watching. I'm not even a little bit of a sports guy. That river to our left is called Three Mile River. It's more than three miles long, so I don't know why. I've never seen the um, the Cessna actually porpoise, and now it's porpoising. Uh, it sometimes takes a few seconds to settle down, but after this last patch, it seems a lot more touchy that way. Well, it does settle down, so it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't sustain a porpoise. By the way, I'm way too close to you. Yeah, you're like it's ghosting. Not. You're ghosting me right now. Now you're not, which is still really close. <laughs> This is uh, lose your FAA license close. Uh, yeah, if not, just die. <laughs> I mean, we haven't we haven't collided yet. No, and you're ahead of me now. I just, I mean, it's I'm just, good with it. It's, it's fine. Putting us both on the same line. Yeah. Whoa! What the hell did you just I, do? I broke autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. I'm turning off. <laughs> <laughs> like I just <laughs> it actually look kind of cool from my perspective. You just kind of bank down into the right. Look well, like I one of those things you see the jet fighter, you know, jet fighter guys do. Exactly. You did it on purpose. That's that's what it yeah. is. Totally on purpose. Yeah. I I well I did because I banked hard to try to get off your line. <laughs> uh, I was gonna give it give autopilot, you know, let it get back. So hopefully I wasn't directly ahead of you anymore. Yeah. But that didn't work. The old dried up yep, yep. mill town of Taunton, Mass on our left, or our right, sorry. Uh, yeah. You go past a certain point and then autopilot is, nope, I'm turning off. <laughs> You've abused me too much today. Right. I quit. I'm leaving. So you cons consider what you've done. It's funny how much closer things seem when you're flying, though. Like, like even just like measuring distances, because you know, driving. Well, I mean, I live in Texas now, and, and I know in the West here, it's it's more of a straight line thing than it is on the coast or in the Midwest, anyway. But like, like when I lived in New England, it'd be like, oh, I'm going to drive there, and it's like, okay, that's like a 30 mile drive. I'm like, but it's 12 miles line of sight, because they don't know how to, they didn't know how to build a straight road. Most of the most of the streets and highways and roads there were formerly, you know, cow pads and wagon trails. And it's just it's so interesting to like when I moved to when I moved to Texas and I'm like, okay, everything's a grid. This is really convenient. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Until you want to go northeast or southwest or something. Yeah. We have cr we have some that we have some angled streets, but yeah, you're right. It's still yeah. But at least at least at least most of the streets are relatively a straight line versus just weaving around. Right. I have a well, friend of mine. Right. I have a friend of mine who's originally from the Chicago area, and he moved to Connecticut two years ago, two and a half years ago, and it blew his mind. He's like, "Okay, I'm on this road. It says I it says it's a north road, but I've been going east for the last five minutes." And I'm like, "Yeah, because yeah, because the bottom point to the top point is north south more than it's east west." He's like, I'm not sure about that. Like, it is. Trust me, the terminus of those two roads makes it north south. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, freeways we have here. 
So we have, um, say there's the 101 that goes north south. Yep. But um, there's a freeway that crosses it in San Jose. And um, so if you're going north on 101, you can go one way, which is 680 north, or you can go the other way, and it's 280 north. But they both go west and east right there. Well, of course. But that's not the way it should be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes total sense. So that airport, that airport at our 12 right now is Mansfield Municipal. That's Mansfield, Mass. It's a small town. And to the left of the highway, uh, you see an area there that looks like a bunch of fields and then a building in the back. Those fields are actually parking lots. That is an outdoor, that's an outdoor concert place. Uh, oh, okay. It used to be called Great Woods. It's now called, last I knew it was called Makes the Comcast sense. Center. But that's all parking lot, yeah. So you look at that and you're like, oh, big farm field. No, nah, concrete in, in asphalt, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just, when I see these sites, I want people to know what, why I'm, mm -hmm. you know, partly why that's I chose some of this stuff, so. Um, but yeah. I lived in Mansfield for about two years. Maybe it was only a year. You can even tell where uh, people have set up racetracks on the uh, on those parking lots. Yep. Probably a autocross club or something. Yep. Exactly what it probably is. Well, it looks really cool. I'm doing a top-down view right now as I fly over it. Nice. Um, the uh, usually when you because I I look at a lot of. I look a lot of uh, aerial. I'm on Google Maps a lot. Yep. Looking for places to fly. Yep. And oftentimes you, you see that in like a abandoned air, airstrip or something. Yeah. It's either going to be um, racing for fun or it's going to be like a driving school. Yep. Or you, sometimes you'll see uh, like CHP or cop cars out there and they're doing like um, practice or uh, training. Police yep. training. Pers uh, Def they call it defensive driving, but it's really offensive driving. They're, they're learning how to take you off the road. <laughs> yeah, basically. You know, how to take curves and how to pit people. Yeah, J-turns, things like that. Which are not nearly as easy as they make them look on TV, by the way. No. <laughs> as with most things. I think the stadium should be coming up soon. We're coming over Foxborough, so it should be up here. Maybe it's not represented well. I thought it was. I thought I flew over it before. Let's see, that's 95 on the right, and on the left is 495, and it's pretty much between those. Oh, that's it. It's straight ahead. All those big parking lots with that round, roundish thing on the uh, on the right. That's Gillette Stadium, and all of its parking lots. And then there's like a little shopping mall in front of it. There looks like a water tower too. Two water towers, and that's along US One, which is one of the coastal. It's our version of the one. It's the East Coast version of the 101 scenic along the coast and then cuts inland in places. Yep, that's Gillette Stadium. Actually, it's rendered pretty well, better than I thought it would be considering it's not hand done, you know? Yeah, it looks like um, photogrammetry. Yep. In fact, the uh, even some of the buildings here look like photogrammetry instead of the AI generated stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually not bad. I'm looking at it right now as I fly over it. Not bad. A little bit of parking there, too, huh? Oh, in fact, you can actually see the boundary back here off my right wing. There's a field there with uh, 
see the AI generated versus the uh, yep. uh, photogrammet photogrammetry uh, topography. Yep, I did see that. Now we're back in AI land. Yep. Which again, for rural stuff, is is pretty good. But when you get to stuff like that, it's mm -hmm. not not up to par. Uh, that looks like a prison down here. Uh, right which the, back here, I'm passing over it, but it's right behind. Yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah, that's uh, that's Walpole. That would be Walpole. Um, MCI Walpole is what it's technically called. Massachusetts Correctional Institute. There's Walpole. one up here too. Is that also a prison? Actually, that's that's Walpole. Ahead of us. Yeah. Ahead of us and on the left it's is Walpole. Right yeah, yeah. Oh, the left. Well, kind of, kind of below us. Yeah. Yeah, right below. Yeah, that's MCI Walpole. There's the one back there. Maybe that's a. Could be a. An extension to it. Could be, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the, uh, there's three major state prisons in Mass, and that's one of them. Actually, we'll probably be flying over the other one, too, because we're flying right over Concord. And that's one of the, uh, that's one of the other big ones. It's turning into a, uh, a prison tour? Prison tour. We did, we did miss Bridgewater, which is also, used to be a state hospital, and it's also a correctional institute. If you look ahead of us and to the right, I think what we're looking at is a boundary between uh, AI and photogrammetry. It could be, or it could be that the imagery is from different seasons. I've seen some of that. Yeah. Because you see how the ground is browner. But yeah. Yeah, there's some... Some interesting boundaries that show up that obviously in real life wouldn't be quite so dramatic. Oh yeah. Or I've seen like where a forest is just cut off because the uh, on one side of the boundary is the imagery didn't show the trees well enough. So the yep. guy didn't know there were trees yeah. Yeah, and it's just well, there's a spot right here, uh, just off to my left right now. I'm looking at where there's just this one little spot where you can tell that it didn't 3D render the trees, but there's trees there. You know. They just printed on the ground. You're about to fly over it. Oh yeah. And that should be Sudbury. No, Medway. Okay. And Norfolk. We're not up to Sudbury yet. It's interesting too because I mean, you live in the West, and I now live in the Midwest slash Southwest and just the way roads and neighborhoods are built so differently you know it's not you know it's just you don't see these grids of housing complexes as much up in the Northeast no it's, and I w I've been up there I've been up to uh, uh, is New Hampshire Vermont yep yeah, I lived in Vermont, Vermont for years and uh, sort of you get this this Appalachian thing where it's just kind of a spider web of windy roads yep. Yep. going in no particular direction or just kind of connecting small bits of civilization rather than, you know, because they all had to kind of follow the contour of this, you know, very rounded off mountainous terrain. Yep. Yeah, it's Northern Vermont is a beautiful, Northern Vermont and New Hampshire, but to me, I'm more Vermont, is just beautiful to fly over. It's just gorgeous to fly through that area. Um, one of my favorite areas to fly in the sim is Northern Vermont. It'd be even better if the seasons were right, but can't have everything. Where yeah, I agree. But you know, like they say, you can't have everything. Where would you put it? <clears throat> What are we coming up on now? Ashland. So that's the I-90 corridor coming up. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna ping Beverly Adis and just see what they're doing for landing. 
about to hit our uh, waypoint, by the way. Yeah. Nice. Airport, there we go. Calm winds. No clouds to speak of. Runway nine are in use, so we're gonna be on a good we're gonna be on a good approach right off the bat. Alright, shut up. I don't wanna hear you anymore. So runway nine, yeah, we're going to be coming in right on the, the perfect vector for that. Cool. Oh, because you picked the uh, waypoints to come up and in from the west. I did, just because I was trying to avoid downtown Boston, but yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, so now we're heading north over Wayland and Sudbury. And the next time we turn off to our right will be should be the Concord prison that I was talking about. God, what is this below us, right behind us? There's a ton of cars. Holy shit. Uh, holy crap. Some kind of big, uh, well, wait a minute. Where are we? Because uh, now I think I know exactly what that is. Let me check. Let me cheat and check. Google Maps. Well, you have a tablet on your knee. You're allowed to check. Yep. We're over at Ashland. Sap you. Let's reconcile that with where I am. Just trying to find it. Let me know if we're going to fly in anything because I have my screen blocked completely right now. No, we're good. Yeah, that is what I think it is. Uh, let me just zoom in and verify. That is a place called Adesa, A D E S A. It is. Yeah, Adisa, Boston. And if that's what I think it is, wholesale luxury. So they do they wholesale vehicles, but they also if I if it's a place I think it is, they also provide all of the police and other emergency vehicles for the state. Uh, Town, state, everything for Massachusetts. They have the contract. If you're buying a pol if you're in a city and you want to buy a police car, that's where you buy it. Or even like uh Fleets of government vehicles, like uh, or you know, even non-law enforcement, I'll bet. Yeah, yeah, but that's definitely. Um, my father was a police chief, and I, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, I think I recognize that place. Mm -hmm. And he used that's where he used to get his cruisers. It was not as big back in the back in 25 years ago when he was doing it. But all right, where are we now? Sudbury. Sudbury's pretty rural. It's just going to be mostly trees. There's some beautiful, expensive houses in Sudbury, but you won't be able to see them very well. Actually, there's a little neighborhood off to our left that probably looks like an apartment complex, but those are not. Those are homes. I don't think there's a single apartment in Sudbury. Uh, Bedford... Uh, airport, which we're going to fly kind of over, it used to be called Hanscom Field. It was an air reserve base, and it is the one place. Actually, we can see it to the to the about a two o'clock. Uh, it's the one place where I've ever been in an actual flight simulator in 1987 or 88, and it was an F-15 simulator. I had to put on a pressure suit and everything. Pretty wow. crazy. Oh, it was it was pretty awesome. I had a I was smuggled in. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I oh, knew yeah, some, I knew so somebody. Weird. Yeah, I knew somebody, and they smuggled me in, and got me in the sim for a little while. Yeah, I saw that comment. 
I think that might be Tufts Animal School to the uh, to the left that we're flying over. I could be wrong. Tufts University. They have a very big veterinary school somewhere in this area. Actually, no, it's a little further to the west. Never mind. I don't know what that was. Definitely looked educational. Five miles to our next waypoint. And we'll be coming straight in on runway nine, so it should be an easy landing. This is also the first real test of my new headset, so seems like it's working pretty good. Yeah, in my in my opinion, nothing beats a good headset. No, and I have to have wireless. I can't I can't have a wired headset. I I know they sound better. I know the quality's better, and you don't have to worry about it dying. But I can't handle being tethered. Yeah, my thing with wireless uh, things like keyboards and mice and stuff. So I just don't want to have to deal with the connectivity and uh, battery issues. Or a battery dying in a, at a critical moment, yeah. I run a wired keyboard and mouse on my, on, on my stuff. But a headset is different because I, I want to be able to move around and not worry about tangling myself up. Uh, to the left, that is Marlboro, Massachusetts, I believe. Let me double check. Yes. Marlboro, Massachusetts and Maynard, Massachusetts. Sluggard car is in the TBM9 in front of us. Oh, it just disappeared. Got vaporized by aliens, apparently. So I think to our left now. If you look to the left, you can see a road going past those fields. You see that there's kind of an odd-shaped pond there, and then there's a bunch of buildings right beyond, oh, yeah. right next to the pond. That's MCI Concord, and that's the most max security prison in the state. Back in the 90s when there was the scandal of the uh, Catholic priest in Boston who got friend too friendly with some of the altar boys, that's where he ended up. Mm -hmm. And he was only in there for a few months before he met an unfortunate accident from an inmate who was already in for multiple life sentences, so he didn't have anything to lose. <clears throat> right. Apparently doing God's work. <laughs> Pun intended. 100%. Uh, all right, so there's, uh, there's Bedford Hanscom. And we are pretty much on course for Beverly now. We'll cross over US 3. I-93 and US-1 right before we land. <coughs> now we're doing better time than I thought we would for this uh, too. So flights have been a little shorter than I planned. I tried to buffer just in case it was bad weather or something. Mm -hmm. That airport is uh, Hanscom Field. Yes. Yeah, I don't think there's still any uh, active air reserve stuff there, but there might be. Let me pull up the chart, uh, the uh, airport chart, and see. 
Hands come. Yeah, I see where the military was. It looks completely empty. Uh, there's still an Air Force ramp. There's still a U.S. Air Force ramp there. So I've got the current chart as of November 2019. So. Yeah, but if you look on Google Maps, it looks abandoned. Mm. Is it the ramp on the north? No. No? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Where's north? No, it's on the... Stupid thing isn't... Uh, no, it's on the south side. It's south of 2-9. There's a large ramp down there. And there's U.S. Customs to the right of the control tower. There's a big ramp and there's a tiny spot there labeled U.S. Air Force. So they must still have some small presence there. Yeah, the north has a whole bunch of stuff that's shut down. No longer active. The Navigraph charts have been pretty good for me. Yeah, Navigraph looks really good. It's a little it's expensive. Really it's a little expensive, but you can do the monthly and do one month and try it. That's that's always one good way, you know, and if you like it, do the annual. I bit off the annual because I looked at what it came out to over the year and it made sense, but I tend yeah, to jump. If you're pretty committed to it, then yeah. there's no reason not to get the annual. Well, that's why, like I say, the monthly, you can always try it for a month, and then if you like it, you do the commitment. If you don't, you don't. I've liked it. That, like I say, I've been able to turn off things like taxi assistance and stuff like that because I have it handy. And one of the nice things is, is it links to the SIM, so it shows me where I am on those taxiways. Yeah, that is nice. So I can flip over to it. You know, I mean, I, I know you can pull charts and see the taxiways from other places, but this is synced. So I can go, oh, I need to turn left here or turn right there. And sometimes, like, I was at BWI uh, yesterday, and it's, BWI is just totally wrong. I'm trusting that it's wrong in the simulator. Like, there's literally a runway in the simulator that is not in the charts. So, oh, funny. Yeah. It's a taxiway in the charts. It's a runway in the sim. Well, the AI must have screwed it up. Yeah. I did buy my first uh, airport. I bought uh, Bradley International in Connecticut. And it's pretty good. The, the, the visuals on it are pretty darn good. What's nice is it's got other other li uh, li library, liveries there too. So when I go in, I'll see like planes from American and Delta and stuff like that at the gates. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right, why am I not seeing uh, Beverly yet? I would have thought, oh, 13 miles. Yeah, I would have thought we'd start seeing it. It did say visibility was 10, but still. Should be pretty much dead ahead. And it's pronounced Beverly, by the way, not Beverly, Beverly. I do see an airstrip up there that's uh, lined up right with us. Yeah, that's got to be it. It's just real fuzzy on mine. I'm not really seeing it that clearly yet. Uh, 11 miles out. Do we want to start descending yet? Probably not. A little, little premature, right? Uh, no, we're only at two. We're only at two grand. Is your sim getting a little chunky? I just kinda... I just stuttered twice. Just literally as you were saying, that, I was thinking, huh? Your, ta your tail. I'm, I'm like dropping my throttle, but you kept getting closer. Yeah, I I had a couple of stutters there. I don't know why. I'm holding at one 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 five, pretty pretty solid. Yeah, but if the the sim will actually pause you. Right. Right.
Which is an essential feature. It just makes it weird for multiplayer. Yeah, it's better that it does that than screws itself up in some other way. Right. Yeah. Pause for five seconds and you find yourself inside a mountain or something. It's a different kind of sea fit. So Boston is just far enough away where you can see some buildings sticking up and you don't have to worry that they're not right. Uh, <laughs> I, see it. I see the skyline. Because there's one more yeah, big tower there that's just missing. That tower to the right is the Prudential. And there's now, a, as of a year and a half ago, uh, there's, there's one Dalton which is taller than anything else in the city. And it should be there and it's not. It does not represent it in the sim at all. I think the first 20 floors of one Dalton are a hotel and the rest are extremely expensive condos. Oh, I see the strip now. Okay. I don't know why it took so long for me to be able to pick it out, but looks like we're going to want to come a little bit to the right. If I'm reading that correctly. Yeah. So I am going to, uh, I'm going to bring heading to 105. So we're cleared for a straight into uh, runway nine. Huh? I'm not even calling the tower. So yeah, we're cleared. No, I mean, I, yeah. I, I'll, you know me, I don't mess with the uh, in-game. Yeah, ATC. run runway nine was the one that it said to use. So that's what we're going to go in on. Yep. So last bit of sightseeing uh, to the right of that, you can kind of see a little bit of a harbor there and some buildings. Uh, that is Salem, Massachusetts, the witch city. And beyond that, that chunk sticking out is Marblehead, which is a very nice uh, coastal fishing town, fishing, fishing village type city. And I'm going to kill autopilot and start my descent. I'm going to come in nice and gentle on this. If it'll let me here, come on, come on. And be gentle. And if you overshoot me, that's fine. If I'm uh, coming in too oh, soft for you. I'm trying to keep speed at 115 and just descend. Is there, there must be a waypoint on top of this airport because that's all it's showing me on the map. Oh, like a, a, a VOR? Um, not a VOR. Well, it's a, uh, it's a cheap, you know, it's a nav aid. Yeah. Uh, a GPS waypoint. Right. Kind of thing. The triangle. Yeah. The little hexa hexagon, hexagon thing. No, that would be a VOR. Oh, that's what I see on the map. That's the, uh, the, 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 the left-hand screen. The oh, the left screen. screen. The PFD. I'm sorry, the right screen. Right screen, the, yeah, the map. Yeah. The MFD. MFD. Crossing over I-95, 1,000 feet. All right, Perry, stop looking at the scenery. Pay attention to your landing. They keep looking off to the sides for stuff. I'm back almost to idle now. 500 feet. It's where 
Auto Line Idol. These trees are nice and close. I'm going to apply a little flap this time. Ah! Ah! Oh, that was hard. Just blame the oak. No refunds. All right, I'm rolling on to. Uh, we'll cross runway three four. And there's a taxiway on the left. Uh, that's the other thing with Navigraph, just so you know, you can run it on a separate device and it'll sync. So it cloud syncs it as it does it. So like I run it, I usually have my laptop or tablet off to the side with it on it. And it copies your location over as you fly. Are you down? I am. I just uh, exited the runway right behind you. Oh, okay. There's a taxiway sign right in the middle of the road. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, let's go up just past the tower here. Actually, this building right in front of the tower. I know there's not actual park. This is just one of those open ramps, it looks like, anyway. Pull up a little more to park. And parking brake engaged. Engines off. Oh, you're good. You're still behind the line. Barely. Just right. manually push it back. Yep. And the last leg is going to be Beverly to Zero Bravo 5 via Pudgy. So let me set my uh, payload. So it's just me and my co pilot. Put these passengers off my plane. Get off my plane. Uh, stop beeping. I tried to clear the one point and it cleared the whole thing. All right, starting over. It's easier. It's always easy. I just do that. Yeah, I usually just kill it and start over. Uh, total baggage, 40 pounds. Oh, well, it did keep uh, KBVY in there, so really all I wanted. Pudgy. Yeah. I gotta put a little bit more fuel in. I'm really low. Do you actually want to go over to the... Uh... No. No, I just had a guy come over with a jerry can and fill it up for me. <laughs> I was already in a payload screen. I'm like, screw this. <laughs> mm -hmm. I checked to see if there was a request for fuel option, and there wasn't. So I'm like, all right, forget it. We'll do it my way. Let me start my engine so that I don't... Uh... Kill my battery. And start our planning. Clear. From Beverly. I like how it does load the first one in, at least when you do that. I think it's just a consequence of it uh, just holding whatever last thing you enter. Yeah, well, I'll, but I'll take it. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to Pudgy. Is that Oscar Bravo? Oscar, no, uh, yeah, uh, no, zero. Zero Bravo 5. Zero. 
go to Osco Brower Five, you might have a longer flight. Yeah, who knows what that's going to be? Yeah. <laughs> I'm tempted to put it in just to see where it would send me. Turner Falls? Yep, Turner Falls. Okay. And we'll probably be landing on 3-4. That's the one it usually sends you to. And it's going to suck, just so you know ahead of time. 3-4, uh, you come in and there's a, there's a hill right in front of the runway. Sweet. But, it, no but it, is, it is the standard landing runway there because of the way the winds are. I mean, my idea of fun is, uh, is, uh, is bush flying in the mountains, so. So you'll be fine with that, yeah. It is over, the, the runway is over 3,000 feet, though, so you're good. We are going to fly at 3,000 for this one because I know there's hills out there that are going to get in our way otherwise. Sure. So. Uh. And then I need to go to zero Bravo five. And of course I scroll the wrong way, so I have to go the long way around. Yeah, I've had to get into the habit of like, am I putting in a W? I better scroll down. Yeah, exactly. I better scroll up. Yep. Yep, exactly. All right, let me just check that course and make sure I got it in right. Looks good on the MFD. This will be the longest flight we do today. Yeah, I saw that, 40, 45 minutes. Yeah, that's my estimate on it. All Looks right. like we do have some hills of about 1,200 feet? Uh, i say at least, yeah, probably 1,200 feet. Well, that's the, um, so I entered it in a little nav map. Yeah. And so the course that we have laid out, um, that's the elevations that we're heading over. Yeah, that sounds about right. And I don't get to do my, and by the way, part of the reason I sent us to Pudgy is because I, I'm anticipating it's going to put us on runway 3-4 for landing. If it doesn't, then we got to come in from the other side, but that's not a big deal either. From the other side is a much easier landing because you come in, there's a river, and then the airport's about 100, 150 feet above that river. So it's a pretty, it's a really easy approach the other way. It's a Connecticut River Reservoir. Connecticut River. Yeah. The Quabbin Reservoir is the, uh, is to the south east. The Connecticut River that's dammed up a little there, so they, somebody might be calling it a reservoir now. I don't know. Uh, yeah. The map, yeah. The map says river. Uh, reservoir. I'm just getting my stuff set up here so I don't screw up my takeoff again. All right. I'm good to go. Yep, I'm ready when uh, you are. We're going to be taxiing to runway Niner, since that's where they landed us. That'll be nice. That'll take us. Ah, it's a long fucking taxi, though. What's the wind doing? Wind is zero. If it's the right way to, if it's the right way to go, it's the right way to wind go. Wind is zero. You want to go 2 7? Well, I want to go on the active runway. All right, well, then that's Niner. Niner was the active. This from the person who says, I have to fly at live time. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be real. Releasing parking brake, starting my taxi. We'll cross 3 4 right here. Yeah, I know. I, I, I blur the lines sometimes. Different people blur the lines in different ways. Yep. Uh, we'll follow Alpha all the way out to Bravo and then turn down to Delta. See, like, take the time thing. You know, if I, if I constrain myself to only doing 
current date and time. You know, I'd, I'd have to wait until the summer to fly in the summer in Alaska. I don't want to do That's that. That's true. This is true. Uh, if you do want to top off your tanks, there's a there's fuel here. I don't uh, really I did need what you to. Did. I did okay. it on the screen. Yeah, that guy with the jerry can over there is really friendly and helpful. So, say the truth, you siphoned it off of the plane next to you. Shh. <laughs> I made sure the security cameras weren't pointing that toward me when I did it. Some weird terrain out here. Yeah, I've run into this in a few of the uh, generated airports. These are, these are problems. <laughs> well, if you see uh, on on our right, you can see the, uh, it's yeah. the photogrammetry terrain. Yeah. Rather than just kind of. Black this is our turn. Shit. A little tight there. Okay. You missed the apex on that one. Yeah, a little bit. No passengers. I don't care. <laughs> Based on my last couple of landings, apparently that doesn't change it any. <laughs> and I'm just going to roll right out on this one, too. Yep, I'll be right behind you. Make sure my flaps are up. Because this is a uh, 4,700 foot runway, I don't need a flaps for takeoff here. I'll do my initial climb at 700 feet, because that is the way I do it. And then I'll go to... 500 if that's too steep. I don't think it's going to be a problem though. Oh, you're close. I can see your shadow. <laughs> oh, I, I basically hit you. Whoops. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> that's uh, me hitting Fine, the wrong... <laughs> It was me uh, not knowing what buttons to press. I had to drop my climb to 500 though because I took off too early. I don't trust vertical speed. I... See, I, it's so reliable for me. As long as I keep an eye on my airspeed, make sure I don't fuck that up, I'm good. Well, but if you, you know, if you start taking off at 5,000 feet. Yeah, it does make a you, difference. Then you can't do 500 feet a minute. Correct. That's right. I agree. And I will admit so, most of my, most of my flying is at, you know, less than 5,000 feet. So at least in these well, planes. We're, we're heading away from our course. So let's, let's get our left hand. Yeah, I just wanted to get a little altitude first, but sure. Start banking left. Well, I'm only at 600, so. Because I was a little rough on my takeoff. What's your airspeed? You got, you got so much airspeed. You can climb. You can be a much better climb. That's what I'm doing. That's why um, um, I'm not exactly, I, I can't even remember what best climb is. But I know it's around 70. Uh, this plane, so 75 to 85, is recommended climb. Yeah, so I'm usually doing about 70, 75. Okay, so there's no so. wind, but I'm getting tossed around a little here. Yeah, because I'm climbing at uh, 700, 800 feet. I'm climbing at 1,000 right now. And I'm holding on. Well, now it's starting to drop off a little. What the fuck are you doing? What the heck? I don't know. I don't know. Something went wacky. did a diving roll. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Is the autopilot trying to kill you? Autopilot's oh, <laughs> trying to kill me, yes. I need to double check my settings. <laughs> well, I uh, got my altitude good. 
I've had shit like that happen before. I, I, like, every time I turned it on, for whatever reason, it would just send me into a screaming dive. And I never really figured out what the problem was there. It's doing it again. It a there, but... It's doing it again. Yeah, look at that. And that is an extreme roll. Yeah, I don't know what the hell it's doing. Oh my gosh, the uh And the trim will be all completely it, off right. It now. blew my trim off the charts. I'm trying to fix it now. Alright, let's trim it out. Might just have to hand, have to hand fly it. That's what I had to do. Trim it out, trim it out. Um my autopilot just tried to kill me too. What the hell? Yeah, it's it's screwed. And I think I might be done now. I think I might not be able to get out of this one. Oh no. Oh yeah, you're right. I am screwed, is what I am. Just recover. You gotta you can recover. There you go. Alright. It's really bugging me though. I don't know what's going on with it. I mean in real life your your aircraft probably would have broken up. Yeah, I think so. Thankfully, this isn't. Oh, it looks like mine is behaving okay now. Mine's definitely not. Oh, no, it's altitude mode. Is that what's killing it? Oh, it's porpoising like crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, jeez. Yep, that's not working at all. So, alt er, altitude mode hold. Uh, porpoise like crazy. I didn't even have that on and mine went crazy. Yeah, but you had roll problems, so you yeah. probably had um, nav or heading on. I have neither nav nor heading on right now. If I just turn on AP with nothing else on, it's blowing me up. I don't know well, what the issue uh, is. Nav and heading are the only... Um, yeah. Uh, lateral controls on I this know, plane. I know. Just, just, it's just hand fly. Good old-fashioned... Yep. Besides, every once in a while, you need to practice, you know. Yeah, I know. Maintaining, maintaining levels. It just happens to be the longest flight we're doing today, and I have to do it that way. It's annoying. Right. This is like the this is like the flight where it would have where we would have wanted it. I just found a big hole in the ground too. Oh really? Oh yeah, big ass hole in the ground. Yeah, it's about a 200-foot hole in the middle of nowhere. Uh, on your screen right now? I just had it on my screen. It, it's not on now. I'm, I'm past it. Looks like a quarry or something. Yeah, but I don't think there's a quarry there, and I think if you dug that deep there, you'd be in water. Right. Yeah, this close to the ocean. All right, I guess we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. Mm. 
Now I'm so paranoid, I'm doing like a super gentle climb. I have an altimeter 3049. Is that what you got? Uh, four eight, but that's close enough. I mean, oh four nine, yeah. And I'm just coming up on three thousand. Uh, so am I. There we go. I'll keep it to the balls of the walls till I catch up to you. Yep. I'm uh, at about ninety knots. Okay. I don't know what the heck is going on with the autopilot. And it happened to us both at the same time. Which leads me to believe it's a game problem. Yeah. Uh. I'm just like looking at all my buttons now to see if anything was on and nothing is. Like literally I have nothing on and I hit turn on autopilot and it just goes off the charts, off the walls. Makes no sense. My plane wants to bank to the left. Oh, I've climbed. I'm up to 3,400. Bring it down a little. Yeah, so we will not do that with the autopilot again, that's for sure. So this way will have to be done this way, which is no big deal. One of the advantages, at least I know this terrain well enough to know what I'm looking at, you know. I know the area. Like this stretch of land we're flying is probably the, what I've flown the most in the last 30 years of flying the simulator. <laughs> So straight ahead, that little bump on the horizon is Wachusett Mountain. Mm. And then to the left, there's a slightly higher set of bumps, but that highest one should be Mount Monadnock, which is the most climbed mountain either in the world or in North America. It's uh, 3,000 feet. It's a fairly easy climb. I've done it a, probably a dozen times. pre climbed the cliffs on the front of it a couple times until I fell off. And I got smart and said I probably shouldn't be doing that anymore. Right. So I'm actually at closer to 3600, but I'm, gonna, I'm slowly coming down. Are you past Hanscom? I'm trying to uh, gauge distance here. Not yeah. Quite. Okay. I'm still coming up on it. Ten o'clock. Okay. All right. So I'm not as far behind you as I thought. I didn't think so from the lights. I thought I was probably within three or four miles of you. Yeah, it's hard to tell until you're it right is. up on a plane. I think in FSX it used to give you your distance when you had the tags up, the name tags. Yeah, for this kind of thing, it would be great because I don't really, you know, your altitude is fine, helpful, but I would also, it'd also be nice to know the distance too yeah. and like your heading and your speed. Yeah. So it'd be nice things to be able to like turn on or off. Yeah, even if you had altitude and distance, that would be, a, I mean, distance would be a big factor. Right. Heading and speed would be, I guess I'd put that in nice to have versus I want it which is distance. <clears throat> so, I'm just passing Burlington. And you're in the Bay Area, roughly, just to not get yeah. too specific? Yeah, okay. In South Bay. I 
visited that area in 2004 for a couple days. I had a friend in Milpitas. Mm, yep, I know where that is. I lived there once, way back when I moved from Southern California to Northern California. We lived in Milpitas for a while. <clears throat> yeah, in 2004, I did a 30-something state road trip. Oh, and, wow. uh, visited friends all over the country and kind of lived on the road for about seven weeks. Nice. I bet you had a lot of adventures during that. It was, it was, so it was, I had worked for a company that closed and when it closed, I had cashed out pretty well. I was a mm -hmm. uh, second to last person out the door. So I ended up in pretty good shape and, so um, mini retirement. Or a sabbatical? Pretty you much. I bought a sports car and drove across the country. <laughs> I, I did, I did 13,000 miles in seven weeks in an MR2 Spider. Two seats, oh, wow. mid-engine convertible. Yep. Uh, which, which generation? Third gen, the last one, the convertible. Uh, the that was the only one that was a soft top, yeah. Which was not the best performing of the, of the three. But it was to me the most fun because it was such a it was a, such a nimble little car. Well, um, I mean, cars cars of that of that class are not, you know, they're supposed to be fun. Yeah. They're not supposed to be quick off. Well, this is one of one of my friends who had one gave gave a perfect description. He goes, "You can do seventy miles an hour in this, or one hundred and forty in a Corvette, and have the same amount of fun." Exactly. And and that was a perfect way of putting it. I don't need to do one hundred and forty miles an hour to have fun. But I have a hell of a lot of fun in this thing at this speed, you know. What, what's your air speed? I'm doing 95 right now. Gosh, I feel like you're walking away from me. And I'm at 120. <clears throat> I guess you just still have some catching up to do. Yeah. I am, what am I going over? Yeah, ground speed, I'm at 119. Well, we should both have the same um, uh, winds. Yeah, so, three miles an hour coming out of the south, or three knots coming out of the south on my MFD. Yep. Yep. Three knots from the left. Yeah. I hate how the arrow on that says the dirt, like, to me I see that arrow and I'm like, oh, it's blowing north to south. No, it's blowing south to north. It's three out of that, di that direction, and it took me a while to, to get used to that. Uh, which arrow? On the MFD the on where it the, says north up. On the MFD? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like if there's an arrow pointing to me, that's the direction the thing is moving, not the direction it's coming from. Uh, absolutely. I, I, I considered that a bug or something. I don't, know how, the, I, I don't know how the G1000 really works, so I'd have to, I don't know. <laughs> but if you're going to show an arrow yeah. with the wind direction, that's got to be the direction the wind is blowing. Oh, I'm coming up on In you quick words, now. In other words, uh, if the if the arrow is pointing down, then yep. that means the wind should be coming from the north. Right. So it's an absolute. It's got to be a bug. And besides, we're heading west, and over here on the PFD, mm -hmm. if you pick option two for the winds, it's coming from the left, which is correct. If the if the wind is coming from the south, then that is correct. But you look over at the MFD and it shows the arrow pointing down. It points to the south, yeah. which means, which is telling you the wind is coming from the north. I, yeah, that's the thing. And again, I don't so know if it's a. They're opposite each other. I, my question is: Is it a game bug, or is it a is the G one thousand really buggy that way? You know, I don't know. I don't know, but if I was flying a real plane and the and the the glass was telling me was giving me an arrow, yeah, I would absolutely complain if that was like. Hey, the arrow was pointing to the direction that the wind is coming from. I said, it makes no sense. Yeah. I'm up on you now. Um, I'm at your 8 o'clock. Okay, cool. And I'm at 110 knots airspeed. Oh, I better uh, come back up to about probably 25, 24, 2450 or so RPMs. Uh, I'm at 2360. I brought it back a few times to slow down because I was running up in the white. I need 2400. I'm pretty much on your six now. 
it's fun following this way. People keep messaging me in Discord, and I'm like, I can't look at that right now. <laughs> I don't have autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> Give me autopilot, and I can do it. Yeah, give me autopilot. I can do this. I can't do it without autopilot. Mm -hmm. I have two hands. They're both on the yoke. Which I kind of—I just realized I kind of have a death grip on it too, because I because of what was going on earlier. I was panicked. Right. Absolutely. I'm, I'm definitely having some You're trouble leveling off that. here. Yeah. I'm definitely having some trouble trimming to get a good level flight now. I was doing good till I slowed down. Yeah. That's the thing with trim. You gotta wait until your uh, airspeed stabilizes. Which, of course, as you would trim it, the airspeed changes. So it's kind of a exactly. Well, so the so what I do there is, I, I continue to give it manual input to maintain the the attitude, whether I'm level or climbing or descending. Yeah. I, I try to maintain that attitude with the manual input, and then use. Um, use trim and then see if I can back off the manual input and then when I have no more manual input in and I'm still maintaining the uh, the correct attitude that's when I that's when I'm trimmed out yeah so anybody who knows me has known me for any substantial amount of time knows that I have bad attitude so that's, <laughs> that's kind of part of the problem so and this is why we get along so well <laughs> My dad so used to. My dad. Head. My dad's exact term used to be, uh, "Everybody likes a little ass, but nobody likes a smart ass." <laughs> and to which I would always respond, "Where do you think I learned it?" <laughs> right. You, Dad. I learned it from you. <laughs> uh, that highway to our left, by the way, is Interstate 495. That's the outer beltway for Boston. Oh yeah. Just a little trivia. And the town. Oh, where, I see it on the map. The town we're about to fly over is. Clinton and Lancaster, and unlike in unlike in Pennsylvania, it's pronounced Lancaster here, not Lancaster. Um, that town to our so here's here's a good one. If you've got a map up, at our ten o'clock, I mean at our two o'clock, you see that town where uh, 190 and Mass to meet. Leominster or however it's pronounced. Yeah, Leminster. Yeah. Leminster. <laughs> and that city to the south. Where all the highways come together it starts with a W. Westboro, or Worcester. No. Worcester, or Worcester. Worcester. Or actually, if you're a local, Worcester. Lemister and Worcester, and to the uh, west of Worcester, Worcester is Lem is Leicester, which you probably pronounce Leicester. Well, it's it's yeah, it's like Leicester. It's Leicester, yeah. Leicester, yeah. It, and, and the British will get it fine every time. By the way, they they, they get it because those are British British I mean, town that's names. That's where all this shit came from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that little hill, that little hill at your uh, one o'clock. That's that's uh, what choose it mountain. It is a very small mountain. It's got a little ski area on the north slope. And yes, it's a mountain. I know in the west you wouldn't call it a mountain, but it is a mountain. Mount what choose it. I'm coming up on you hard again. Did you slow down? No. I'm at 115. I'm, uh, I'm at 107. Oh, I'm not coming up hard. I'm com I was going off course. Okay. Well, I've got this very gentle trend to the right that I keep having to correct for. Okay. I see the... I don't know if you have that or you were just tending towards me. I don't know. It's all good. Or now we're on course. Yeah, I hope we are, because I'm following you. I haven't even been looking at our course lately, so. Well, I've got the I'm, I've got the MFD zoomed in, so I can follow the magenta line. I've also got the uh, uh, nav map. Oh yeah, you've got your nav map chart thing. Yeah. Yeah, I keep popping over to Navigraph and looking at that, which is similar. I do like that your nav map uses more of a traditional sectional view, though, whereas the the maps in Navigraph are either um, they have one called Worldview Map, which looks like just a regular it's an open it's an open street map, 
and then they have then they have maps that'll overlay the courses for low altitude or high altitude, but it's not like full sectional style. It's kind of its own thing, which I don't like as well as. If it was so they a, don't have a, the, the VFR sectionals. Not a, not a no, not like a traditional sectional. Well, that's too bad. And you get chart, but you get you get really nice charts for the airports and for like your um, right ILS approaches and things like that. Yeah, you have all the procedures. You have the airport. Diagram. Really, really nice, and and like notes on all the airports if there's special things to consider, like you know takeoff restrictions or whatever. That'll all be in there. Right. But the sectionals are not what you would want. I guess is what I would say. Does it give you the no tams? Yes. Yeah, you get and you get and you get SIDs and refs too. Nice. And stars. So again, it's got all the data. It's just a, that's a, one thing is missing is those maps. It uses all Jeppesen data, so which is why it surprised me that it didn't have the the uh, charts, the sectionals. So that highway should be yeah, that's I one ninety. I am really stable at about 3,000 right now at 108, and I'm going to keep it there because it's working. Oh yeah, you're going. Okay, so I'm I'm at 116, at 2,400 RPM. Let me bring it up then. I was at 2,300. No need, no need to be a slowpoke in the, in this long leg. Yeah, it's just it was stable. <laughs> oh, you had gotten it trimmed out, and it's like oh, I had it trimmed out, out. fucking perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, let me come down to one ten. No, no, I'm, I, I, I already increased. I'm coming up. I'm coming over one. Yeah, I'm, at, you're... I'm at twenty four hundred RPMs now. I'm at thirty one hundred feet, and I'm bringing the nose down. So. I'll be good. I'm at 111. Yeah, but I just passed through 111. You weren't going to catch up to me. 113, 114. I mean, you're still well in sight. You're you're only a couple miles ahead of me. I don't need to fly through you like you did me. I'm trying to keep my FAA license here. Right. I don't know what airfield that is to my left. But well, don't tell anyone, but I don't have one. Yeah, neither do I. I just, this plane, somebody left the keys in it, so I thought, oh, I'll take it for a ride. Spencer? Is that Spencer? Princeton, Sterling? Hmm. Don't know what airport that is. I'm not going to bother looking it up. Sterling. Oh, Sterling. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm stable again. I'm at 3,200, but that's fine. Close enough. Yeah, I also made myself made my way up to 3,200. And I'm at about 112 knots. What's your RPM? 2440. I'm still gaining speed a little bit, so I'll probably get up to 115.
Hey, I got my hands off the, the yoke and everything's staying stable. Nice. Right, so plane's happy. I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee. I'll be back in a minute. All right. I might slight roll to the right. Or yeah, you left in. That's fine. Mine's trying to roll to the right a little too. And this thing really wants to roll to the right. I noticed that. And I've been following you, so as you curved to the left, I followed you and came back to the right. But do you not have that? Uh, mine's actually wanting to go to the left. But it could be a trim it's issue here. from when I had the uh, autopilot on and I just haven't screwed with it. Oh, I mean, that's possible. And with the wind coming out, I don't, out, even, have, I don't go ahead. even have rudder trim on this thing, do I? Uh, I can't remember the keyboard. So there's a keyboard trim. There's a keyboard rudder trim. There definitely is. Does this plane even have? It's either rudder or aileron trim. Yeah. Uh, or maybe not. But this, this rudder doesn't even have a, a, a trim tab. No, you're right. There's no trim on it. So I don't know. Uh, but the question is, is um, if, you, if you're in this plane and you do the rudder trim control, will it actually trim the rudder on a plane that doesn't have rudder trim? I don't know. I'm straight now, though. I just let go of this thing and I'm... It's staying straight. Do you have a, um, so you have a, a yoke. Yeah. Is that, does it have a dead spot in the center? Um, or is it like a real plane where you just go right through center? No, you go right through center. 
But I imagine it, so in the sensitivity sensitivity controls, you can give it a dead zone. Yeah, I give it, I think, a 2% dead zone, just so that I had a little bit. But by default, it had like a 50% dead zone. And I'm like, this is stupid. I have to turn the thing halfway before it does anything, you know? Yeah, um, with, a, with a good yoke like that, with a good control like that, you wouldn't... You, you don't want, want that. Be as small as possible. Yeah. And I think I set it to 2% just so if I bump it, it doesn't, you know... Exactly. And I felt like 2% might be realistic to how it would be anyway, you know, um, because even with, you know, with a mechanical, with a mechanical system like this, there's going to be a little bit of play. Oh, yeah. Well, and in real life, I mean, it, when the yoke is in the center, the, you know, even a few degrees either way, yeah. the aileron is going to flutter a little bit. Right. But, I mean, that's going to be well within the margin of the differences of the air going through over the wing. Exactly. So this is the Quabbin Reservoir we're going over. I see that. The drinking water for Boston comes from here. They pipe oh, let's it. Let's piss on it on our way they, over. They pipe it underground from here to Boston. And they've got the the pipes are they drive they drive a jeep through them to, to check them for blockages. They you know they shut them off and drive drive a, literally drive a jeep down them. Right. Um, and it uh, there are three entire when they created this reservoir in like 1930ish, three entire towns were flooded, and mm -hmm. portions of two other towns. Mm -hmm. They had to relocate people and all that kind of thing. And I know this because my father was born on a farm that resides on the property of what is now the nature preserve around the reservoir. Oh wow! And so his his family had to move. It's currently underwater. No, it's now it's it's actually right adjacent to it, um, but it was part of the land that they took for the for the we call it the Quabbin Reservation. Right. So even though it is land, it's now like. Um, it's protected. Uh, yeah. Owned land. It's state owned. State owned. Uh, and uh, his family had to move when he was an infant because of that. <clears throat> well, the way that um, the way that San Francisco got its water is the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, and you know where Yosemite is. Yep. So Hetch Hetchy was a valley that was just like Yosemite, but like one valley over. Mm -hmm. So imagine if Yosemite had been filled up with water. That's basically what they did. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So if you on your maps, if you look at Belcher Town, that's the town where my father grew up. So he the farm I he see that. the farm he was moved out of was right at the south west corner of the reservoir. Yep. And he was born in 1939. You want to go fly over? No, Just I'm going to I'm going to stay on course. I'm I'm about to overtake you anyway, so I'm on your if you look out to your right, you should see me now. I am like so stable right now, I don't want to touch anything. <laughs> right. And this is a good altitude to be over the over the reservoir in case something happened and we needed to uh, glide. Mm -hmm. What's your RPMs? 2440. Okay. 116 knots, 3100 feet. Stable as could be. Well, like I should be able to match your RPMs and match your speed. Yeah, and I'm going to start my bank soon uh, to get on get on Might course. As well. May yeah. we not be beholden to any. Um... Nope. And if I look at the uh, if I look at the the MFD, it looks like looks like I'm in a good spot to start that bank now. Trim up a little so I don't crash. So being. From the west coast, I'm sure you'll be amazed at the majesty of the highest peak in Massachusetts, which we won't be flying over today. It's it's further to the west, 
but Mount Greylock is the tallest peak in Massachusetts and it is a whopping 3,100 feet from sea level to peak. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've never seen anything quite that high in your life, so I just wanted to point that out to you. Well, um, not today. I haven't looked out the window yet. <laughs> My wife grew up on Vancouver Island and went to a college that was at the base, or her first year college was at a, 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 a uh, <coughs> community college which was at the base of a 7,000 foot peak that she looked at every day from her house. So I'm like, right. when I first brought her to Mass, I'm like, so we're going to bring you to the highest peak in the state? <laughs> and she literally was like, you're joking. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so then a year later, I had to bring her to Mount Washington, which is the highest peak in the Northeast, at 6,000 feet. And she still didn't find that terribly impressive. Uh, considering she could look from, from the town she grew up in and see Whistler, which is, what, 14,000 feet or 12,000 feet or something like that. So wasn't wasn't one of the ways that I impressed her the most, let's put it that way. <laughs> so the course I'm on right now is pretty much dead on for where our destination is. Okay. Um, What's your course heading? Uh, 340. <laughs> Which the runways th runway three four so yeah we're we're in really good shape right now. Might have to adjust a little when we get closer. So off to the left is the Connecticut Valley, Connecticut River Valley. Uh, UMass is over there. Amherst College. Smith College a little further over. Westover Air Base, which is was one of the uh, one of the emergency landing sites for the space shuttle. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's now also known as Westover Municipal. It's no longer a full-on air base. And Barnesfield, which is over there too, is another former air base. There are a lot of air bases in this area, and that's because a couple of these mountains um, were hollowed out. They're now storage facilities. They used to be uh, silos. There were three or four missile silos in these hills right. that nobody knew about until they were declassified. There's one of them that I that I used to drive by all the time, and it was I knew it was military. Never knew what it was until it was declassified in the late '80s or early '90s. Oh no, there was a nuclear missile sitting in there. Yeah, that's for, crazy. For three because decades. If the Soviets knew and shit hit the fan, then that would be a prime target. Yep. But it was it was it was so well hidden that the public people living within ten miles of it didn't know it was there. That that that's mind boggling. All right, I can see the lights for the runway now. And like I said, as you can see, there's a small. I don't know if you're where you are, but there's a small hill in front of it. I see it. Yep. Yep, I see it. I got eyes. So we're gonna come in low over that hill for our approach. I'm actually gonna start dropping a little bit now because this can be a a little bit of a pain for me to come in too softly, so. Alright, I just came up on your tail. You're probably going to overshoot me. I'm yeah. dropping, I, I just dropped throttle back to uh, 2300. And I'm starting a very gentle descent because there's no reason to hurry. There's no reason to come in hard. Unless they want you to. Right. At our one o'clock, you can see in the hills there, there's a little, looks like a pond sitting on top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. That's actually a reservoir. They, It's a hydro. They pump the water up out of the Connecticut River every night. Or maybe it's, I don't know, every couple of days, they pump the water up and fill that reservoir, and then they let it drain and run a hydro. 
and it generates oh, yeah. more power coming down and going up, which blows because it's because it's a more rapid, right? They slow pump it up when the reservoir fills, they let it drain. Are they um, um, the what they'll probably it's a it's basically a gravity gravity yep. fed battery. Yep, that's just so what they describe it, it as. They'll pump it up at night when uh, they'll basically use excess energy from the local power grid. The local power grid that you know during the low points the low demand and then during high demand they'll use that water energy to run the generators it's exactly what they do and that sucker by the way the entrance to that looks like it should be a military it looks like it looks like you're going into norad when you go into that place oh, it's really? got it's got the big doors and it's yeah it's crazy uh they i did tours of it when i was like in high school or whatever i got to, they did it brought us up there and it was it was insane. I wonder if that was part of the uh, like post nine eleven sort of infrastructure hardening. Well, might have been, but when I was in high school, it was the mid eighties. So, oh, got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm fifty one years old. So, no, I, I missed the I missed the part where you said what time this was. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny, the other day I was chatting with a couple of the guys in one of the channels, and somebody's like, oh, I thought you were like 20 years old, and I'm like, no, I just act it. <laughs> that is called the Northfield Mountain Project, that, uh, that reservoir and hill. And that whole, uh, the whole west side of that mountain is also another na uh, nature reservation. That village we see that we're about to fly over is Miller's Falls. It was a paper mill, I think, back in the back in the day. I'm gonna get down lower. Yeah, I'm I'm dropping too. Well above this hill. I'm dropping too. The Otherwise, I'm. The steeper our descent, the harder it is to bleed off speed. Well, isn't that what flaps are for? I'll try to do it early. Well, I'm not in the white arc yet. Oh. So to do that, I'm going to have to level off. Right. And then I can drop flaps. Right. Yeah, I'm going to come down a little hard and do the same. And now pull her up, because I'm like way over speed. Not quite into the red, but I was into the yellow. Yellow's fine. You just need to know to, to not use yeah. uh, full throw. Yeah, I'm idle right now. Oh, shit. Down to it. You all right there? Yeah, I got a connection loss pop up, even though it didn't. The connection's oh, I fine. See that. Yeah, you got way low. There we go. All right, leveling it off at a thousand, bleeding off speed in the white arc. I'm not in the white. I'm and still too hot. Flaps, power back up, and start my descent. I am still too hot, and I'm about to hit the runway. I just hit the white arc. Ah, shit, I hit before the runway. This yoke, I am so getting used to this yoke. Well, yeah, it's, it's got to take some getting used to to know what how much to pull back. And it is, there. it is. Uh, I'm going to go down to the second taxiway. And also, you can go into the sensitivity menu. If, if, if you do, you know, if you're still not getting used to it and you just need to change yeah. the sensitivity, you can do that, too. So, uh... I don't know if you've hit the runway yet, but... Um, I'm just touching down now. Okay. Up speed. So you're 2 o'clock, you see those low, those low, that low gray building? Uh, don't, don't look if you're busy landing, but once you're well, landed... several buildings. 2 o'clock, to the right, the big one, the oh. big building to the right. Got it, yes, yes. That's my high school that I went to. Oh, wow, cool. Like I said, it was right next to the runway. Probably accounted for some of my interest in uh, small planes. Because right. I could sit in class and watch them taxiing and taking off. And this airport is horribly inaccurate. That hangar straight ahead, like at the end of the runway there, that's actually a bus station. That's school buses. And these buildings are all wrong. This is one that I'd love to see somebody redo someday. And I'm not the guy to do that, so... And I'm just going to pull up uh, by the fuel truck here and park. That's some weird. The it's the a, it's all parking. Up. 
It's all Fuck, screwed up. Grass in it. <laughs> it's all screwed up. It is not. This airport well, is completely see... foobarred. Well, you can see the like the uh, the aerial is on here, and you can see planes. Yep. You know, painted on painted in the grass, basically. Yep. Like I say, it's it's just wrong. All right, I am going to stop my stream now. Thanks everybody for watching. Well, that was a damn good flight. That was a really good flight. I thought.